Okay, welcome back to episode three of the Boost Hospitality podcast. My name is Mark Simpson and I am the founder of Boostly. Uh, If you want to go find out more information about us, go to www.boostly.co.uk and Boostly is spelled B-O-O-S-T-L-Y. Today is season three, episode three, and I'm going to be talking to my Good friend, Ed Davies. Now, I will let you know that this conversation with Ed happened when he was sat in a busy cafe in Spain. Uh, For those who don't know Ed, he has recently moved there with his family to the south coast of Spain, lucky guy, and he has got an online-based business which is all about helping pub owners, restaurant owners, anybody in hospitality just get a better idea of digital marketing. He knows a lot. He's a he's a great guy. I've learned a lot from him, and we've uh, we've known each other now for less than a year. When I decided to do this style of podcast for season three, Ed was one of the first people I reached out to ask, and this episode does not disappoint. We're going to talk about influencers. We're going to talk about uh, prices. We're going to talk about the power of giving stuff away, and just a different way of thinking about it. And I think this is one of the best episodes that I have done in the in the free season. So I'm really looking forward to you to listening to this. I would love your feedback. As always, you can get in touch, boostly.co.uk. You can get in, email me, Mark at Boostly, and find me on the Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Mr. Mark Simpson. So without further ado, let me hand you over to Ed. Okay, not to worry. So I'm Ed. I'm a 31-year-old dad of three, currently based in Javier on the south coast of Spain. Used to live in the Dales, born and bred in Norfolk. And the most important part for this podcast is I used to have a 12-bedroom inn on the Welsh border with Hereford. So it was a quite a large place, 12 on suite rooms, uh, 150-seat restaurant and then public bar large gardens. It was very much somewhere that we ran as a pub with rooms rather than letting it being a hotel with that kind of high uh, premium point. We wanted to keep it more more friendly, more relaxed. It was very much a family run thing uh, with me at the helm. So I did that for seven years. I think the best thing I did there was organising a great Welsh beer festival, which was 52 casks of ale. And I built all the stillage. I learned how to write websites and built myself a website for it. Uh, and the top thing was I invited all of the influencers. And back then, they weren't influencers. They were just people that wrote for newspapers or had books. But anyone who had written a book about beer, I researched them all, emailed them all saying, hey, we'd love for you to come up for this weekend. Um, no expectations, just enjoy yourselves. I was hoping maybe one out of the 30 would say yes. 29 out of the 30 said yes. So we had an awesome weekend. So that's uh, where I come from. The last seven years, I've been working with the hospitality trade, mainly pubs uh, and more recently sort of restaurants, hotels, B&Bs, anything in that kind of local business niche uh, is where I've been working. I think that's kind of touristy. Uh, Working on everything from setting up websites and SEO consulting all the way through to doing um, sort of multi-channel campaigns across Facebook ads, email marketing, uh, Snapchat geo filters. Basically, if there's anything to do with digital marketing, I like to have a little play with it, learn it, and then add it to my skill set. So that's where I'm at. Nice. And with what you're currently doing now, and going on from what you said earlier with like the influencer marketing, how have you seen that progressed from you messaging out a couple of journalists back in the day to where we are now where you know influencers or micro influencers are getting really popular when it comes to working with hospitality it's it's blown my mind how easy it's got and at the same time how much more leg work you have to do it's it's easier in the sense that there's a lot more people that could be influencers like i've worked with um a pub before and it was really struggling that had a pool table and couldn't get anyone in and I said, well, all you need to do is give a free game pool to anyone who checks in on Facebook. And that's a form of influence. It doesn't have to be like, I need someone who's got a million followers. Find someone who's got, if, if you're a restaurant, for example, 
searching on Instagram, finding the people that are posting food pictures around you and inviting them, even if they've got a thousand or 500 followers, if they're relevant, it's all about the relevant numbers. Whereas uh, when I was doing it with newspapers, it was every week I was writing out a newspaper release and just sending out, sending out, sending out. And what, three out of every four months they wouldn't use it. And then once a month they'd use it and we'd get some free press. And it was the it was the same philosophy. You find people who have influence, and the more influence they have, the harder they are to get to, uh, and the harder they are to work with. But if you can get that balance right of finding finding someone local who's got big following, and even just asking people, like, how many people have you got on Insta? Oh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll invite one of your friends for a stay in the hotel or something like that. There's there's numerous ways of doing it. That's a, a great point. I think when it comes to influencer marketing and somebody maybe listening to us now thinking, well, how can I attract people with millions or thousands of followers? That's not always the case. It, it's all about the engaged viewers. If you've got someone with just 50 followers, but every single one of their followers uh, would book on the back of their recommendation, then that, that's massive. And, and it's also that guy who's got the 50 followers. Uh, he's going to feel like absolute gold when you reach out to him and say, hey, I'd love you to come and enjoy something for free. And if you do like it, it'd be great if you posted about it or if you did a little video or whatever. Whatever they do, it could be a YouTube guy, it could be an Instagram guy, it could be Facebook, whatever it is. But that, the guy who's small is going to feel like a god and they're going to feel like they've made it. So they're going to want to show off and they're going to want to work harder for you compared to the guy who's got a million followers and he's going to be, well, you're small fry. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I think as well, there's, there's a lot of hospitality owners might be listening to this now thinking, well, I don't want to give anything away for free, but you don't have to. You could do a, a referral scheme with them, for example, where you say, if anybody books from yours, then we'll just give you 10% of the booking fee. You know, so it's again, it's like thinking a little bit differently. You don't have to pay or give anything for free. You can just purely work on a on like a referral scheme or just say, I'll give you a, you know, whatever that may be. So it's, it's definitely something to look into. And, and the best thing about this marketing compared to anything else out there is that it's so untapped that it is really is cost effective compared to say spending all this money on on seo or google ads this form of marketing is the by far the cheapest out there so it's just a case of thinking a little differently at the same time i don't want people listening to be afraid of giving away something for free because when you look at the perceived value if you're giving out if your rooms are worth 100 quid in ibnb and you know that your cost of turnover is, say, £22. The cost of what you're buying is £22. Now, how many newspaper adverts can you get for that? How many flyers can you get printed up? How much Google ads can you get for that? So whilst I agree that you don't have to give stuff for free, I don't think it's something to be scared of. And I don't think people, people don't get addicted to free. I, I don't think, anyway. Next, I went on to ask Ed about the pain points about what he feels that in the industry right now are the biggest pain points with hospitality owners that he knows? So there's two, but I think they're related. I think one is fear of not doing it right or not doing it properly or am I going to break it, uh, that kind of fear. And then the second one is actually the knowledge of knowing what they're doing. So the two go side by side. The, the other bit is also time. People feel like they don't have time to learn it or they don't have time to uh, do best practice the amount of people that are doing the thing like instagram picture and then toggle on send this to twitter and they don't care that on twitter it doesn't come up with a picture and it's taking extra 30 seconds to do that it's or using mechanisms like ift to get around it it's still time saving so i'd say the biggest thing is fear which comes down to lack of knowledge and then time which again comes to or perceived lack of time uh, which comes down to lack of knowledge again. And finally, like each guest on this series of the Boost Hospitality podcast, I asked Ed what is his one bit of advice that he could give to any hospitality owner when it comes to boosting their bookings right now? So I would say straight off, don't be afraid to try new things. If you do the same as everyone else and you wait for other people to do it first, what comes back to you is going to be lesser than if you were the first one to try it. And the thing is, if you try something, say you're completely not comfortable with Twitter, you don't get it, you've held off forever. If you try it and you get it horribly wrong, nobody's going to see it. That's the absolute beauty. There is nothing to lose and everything to gain. It costs you nothing to set up. Or even if you're looking at things that cost a minimal monthly fee, the risk is so low, it is well worth trying these new things. 
So try this influencer thing. And that was my chat with Ed Davies. I just want to say thank you so much to Ed for giving us his time. If you would like to reach out and say thank you to Ed and say hi, if you go onto any social media channel, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and search for E Davies Work, E D A V I E S Work, then you'll be able to find him and say hello and make sure you tell him that you discovered him on this podcast. That is the end of episode three. You can go right now to the iTunes store and download episode four. It is a good one. If you want to do me a massive favor, please, please, please go to the iTunes store and leave us a review. Like I said, if it's a five star, I send you those virtual hugs. When you do leave a review, please send a screenshot and send it to me on the Instagram, Boostly UK. Facebook is facebook.com, Mr. Mark Simpson. Or you can just send me an email, old-fashioned email, mark at boostly.co.uk. My name is Ben Mark Simpson. I'm the host of the Boost Hospitality Podcast. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you in the next episode.